All right, I am here with Kenny Jensen in uh, the Center of the Arts inside the pool gallery. It's 2020. We are looking at his uh, Small Bites exhibition. Kenny received a BFA in 2000 from Carson Newman University with a focus in painting and graphic design. And he currently works in a range of capacities at St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg Museum of Art. Um, and just real quick, um, Kenny is a multidisciplinary slash contemporary sculptor. He uses found and discarded objects like handwritten notes, fallen branches, and beetle larva patterns as a jumping off point for significance and meaning. Does that sound right to you, Kenny? That sounds right. Well All right. Put. Well, just get everyone a 360 view of this beautiful new space and your beautiful work. So uh, we're going to start with this large piece. And do you want to give everyone the title? Yeah, that, that piece is called The Expanding Universe. Um, it's 20 feet wide. Um, oh, and there's the label there. It's, it's part of an ongoing body of work that I've been developing since 2017 called Paths of Consumption. Um, it's kind of the technical name. Um, but the, so the individual pieces have their own names and their own concepts. Um, but to start out, this pattern that you're seeing was created by wood boring beetle larva, which, whose eggs were laid underneath the bark of a branch. And these patterns are a record of the his their history within underneath the bark within this branch um, and what we know about them the reason why we have these images is because of what they consumed and ryan's uh right here in this vitrine right in front of us here i actually included the source branch so this is the actual branch that has the patterns um, and so you can see that this scale um, is very exaggerated in the actual piece on the wall and what i was interested so i first started out doing patterns the actual scale of of the original forms that these beetle larvae um, consumed ate out of these branches um, and so if you go into the block gallery which is in the block of the art building um, the, a lot of the Black actual, hall. Um, there's a part two, and, and a lot of the actual um, early works in this series, you, you can see there's two-dimensional, uh, there's um, collage works, there's photo cutout stuff, and, and so you can see how this project developed. This is kind of the largest expression of the idea of the passive consumption. Um, and the reason why I I became interested in blowing up the scale is to for a couple reasons one to um, make it more to a human scale um, so that when you go up and look at it um, it has a demanding presence you can see that in order to achieve this this form where it's flat on the wall i had to trace the three-dimensional branch um, and then all of these pieces were hand cut out of uh, half inch plywood with a jigsaw. And that was a very long process in which I had much time to meditate on how I move through the world. How, what's the record of my consumption? How am I interacting with my environment? What will I leave behind that, that, uh, that I will be remembered by? Um, so it became real, real meditation on my own consumption, my own use of the world around me um, and whether I'm caring for it um, or not and what ways, you know, it's complicated. You have to consume to live. And so what ways can I consume better, more mindfully? So that was kind of the meditation with this body of work. And also, um, I just really like the forms. I just think I love finding the forms and sharing them. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, if you look closely on this little branch, just to be clear, you traced this branch mm -hmm. and you enlarged it 
So those exact forms are up on the wall on an exaggerated scale in color. Yes, so I kept it. Excellent. I kept it. It's, it's an interpretation because I translated it from the three dimensional to the two dimensional. So it's an interpretive process, but I tried to keep it as um, faithful to the original uh, as I possibly could. Um, so you see there, that's about little individual yeah, pieces, you know, many they're all different pieces. separately cut. Yeah. <laughs> and separately installed as you if you look at it closely <laughs> with help oh yes <laughs> very separately installed. <laughs> so that is the past of consumption piece and uh, the expanding universe let's move over to this guy on the wall here and this is called the story mm -hmm. and um, here's the, the full piece um, how long is this roughly I believe it's uh, 16, 20, 16 feet, maybe feet. not quite 20. Yeah. And um, of course, if you look close on the text here, we have galaxies and a deep field <laughs> space scene. Yeah, and so, so the you title... have again, this sort of macro versus micro thing going mm -hmm. on. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely relates conceptually to the expanding universe piece. However, these forms, um, it's a reproduction of an, an anonymous story that was written, um, that I found, that was written by uh, a youth from the south side of St. Petersburg. Um, and it was, I don't, I don't remember, I wasn't there when it, when it was written, but I found it later um, and it just really struck me. It just really impacted me, the content, but also the way it was written. Um, and if you, if you could zoom in on the title, Ryan, um, I know you were close up before, um, just to reiterate. So the title is The Story in, in Princess Deep Field. And um, I was talking with Ryan some when we were installing it. Um, I was inspired by this image that was made um, by astronomers you know, some decades ago, it was, their concept was, hey, let's point our most powerful telescope to the portion of the sky that seems the darkest. Like, is there anything there? And uh, it's quite a process to get these images, but when it came back, uh, what the image revealed was a thousand galaxies. Um, that up until that point, it was just a dark part of the sky. And so that's kind of what I, uh, what was, I was inspired uh, as far as the the detail, the coloring on this form, um, but you only see that deep field. You only see those galaxies where they're superimposed on this child's writing, uh, and so that scale is very intentional. The hierarchy there of of our stories um, and how they are so powerful in in how we relate to each other, but we re how we relate to our place in the universe. Um, how we understand ourselves. Um, and at this, at this frame of reference, it, it actually looks like it was handwritten on the wall. Um, and when you go close, obviously it's, it's just a different picture. Um, yeah. I think it's fascinating that you've got one, um, one reference from nature and one from man, both on a small scale that have been enlarged. It's, uh, it's, a, nice, it's a nice play on that, that whole issue. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's go to this piece here. I'll go ahead and zoom into the title for everyone. Um, the top title is showing you the piece we're talking about. The bottom title is referencing the vitrine in the center of the room. So this is seeing in holes. And I believe this is from a branch that fell in your house during a storm. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, so this piece is this piece has uh, has an interesting history. Um, all of those branches, first of all, were part of a large eucalyptus tree, um, which was just a magnificent tree. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen. Do you, I don't know if you have those there. Um, they're all over California, um, but yeah. So this giant eucalyptus tree kind of like uh, shaded our house and we had to evacuate during Hurricane Irma in 2017. And when we came back, 
uh, one of a portion of one of the large branches was laying like against our roof and on the on the ground next to the house and kind of like cotton all these vines um, and so what I did uh, I that at that time um, I was working on a project for this emerging artist grant that I received locally here in St. Pete and I had a different project in mind but when I saw this branch I'm like no this is what it's going to be um, I I've this is part of a series called you are the branches where I, I take I take branches found branches and install them in such a way where it seems like they're mysteriously growing out of the wall um, mm -hmm. so this piece was originally eight feet by eight feet right now it's four by four feet and it was in the shape of like a, a four fingered galaxy um, or a hurricane. Um, and uh, it was called the divine dance. And it took uh, like four days to install. And uh, <laughs> um, I wanted to create, um, you know, it, and I, I wanted to create um, a new piece with the parts that wasn't so large, but also uh, wasn't so specific or literal. Um, and so I created this smaller piece. And when you stand back uh, as you were before, you can see at this angle, when you first walk in the gallery, you see that depth and you see how it's just all these different, it's just chaos. But when you come back around to the front, um, the shadows kind of interfere. When you're actually there in person, you can see that the branches make, the tips of all of the branches make as near as a perfect circle as can be as I could get it mm -hmm. um, so it creates this hole um, at one angle it seems like it's all separate um, and the colors continuously flow in from one to another at this at this perspective um, so it's both chaos and order yeah it's a nice mixture of something that's meticulous and orderly embracing something that is much more disorderly organic and even chaotic yeah they do what they want yeah, yeah. and that's what drew me to the forms too the branches uh were just compelling sculptural forms so i wanted to share them as well, such i really like the fact that it fell on your house and you decided to take <laughs> that put it into a gallery and make it into <laughs> art um i think this piece is uh related because what we're actually looking at in front of us um, are a series of roots. And here is the title, uh, appropriately. It's Digging for the Higher Hanging Fruits, made for, from torpedo grass rhizome roots, which <laughs> I believe are from Florida. Yes. Um, so that is not a drawing on the wall. These are roots that I believe you have tied together. You want to tell us about that? Yeah. Yeah. And if you, yeah, if you do the pan from, from left, from left to right, right. From, yeah, you can kind of see the, the so coloration. If we, if we walk well, in here, effects. yeah, it, it, everything appears red. I'll get up closer and see. And as we scroll around, the color flips as you move with it over to green. So that's a, that's a nice little trick you played on everyone. <laughs> Well, it's very non-dual, so it's it's both <laughs> it's both colors and all in between. Um, mm -hmm. So this piece is kind of the second in the body of work. There's a painting next to it, um, which you could just kind of briefly pan over to at the end there. Um, that is a that's a reproduction, a one-to-one -one scale reproduction of one of my favorite paintings. It's a Romantic era painting by Caspar David Friedrich. Um, and it's called the wanderer above the sea of mist. And what I reproduced was it's an inver it's an inverted reproduction. So I just reproduced the cracks, which formed naturally in the surface of the painting from the time when the artist painted it to whenever it was photographed. Um, so, so you can see by the cracks that over time, just incrementally, just tiny little fragments at a time just kind of grew to create this like really engaging design, but also you can still see the, the remnants of the form of the man standing on the cliff. And uh, you can see, you know, if you're familiar with the painting, you can look it up on your phone, the wander above a sea of mist. 
Um, and so the, the, the piece that we were, the other one, the digging for the higher frame, uh, higher hanging fruit, which is quite a mouthful. Um, this is a recreation of a portion of the, one of the panels in the 16 chapel. This is reproducing the forms of, you can see Adam kind of reaching over Eve and Eve is kind of reaching back to receive this forbidden fruit. Um, and so this, this piece, it's a one-to-one -one scale reproduction of the cracks that appeared over time. So again, it's inverting. Um, so taking what was negated from the form and making that the positive. And if you, to tell you a little bit about the material, I, I, do a, I do a bit of, or I don't so much anymore, but I, I used to be a landscape gardener um, as well as my art. Um, my wife is a vegetable gardener, so we do a lot of stuff outdoors. Um, and that's where I find a lot of my materials as well. Um, a lot of the stuff that's in the vitrine, those fern roots and stuff. So this torpedo grass is the most difficult plant you can have if you want to get rid of it. Um, so it's, it's a rhizome. So if any piece of that root is left in the ground, it's going to start a whole new network. Um, and you have to dig down, um, hence the title, you have to dig down about a foot and a half to two feet to make sure you get it all out and you have to pull all the individual rhizomes out. Um, and so I had all of this material and again, the repetitive work, the meditation, thinking through this process, thinking through the concepts. Uh, and so then the actual making of it, I, um, again, lots of layers here, but I, uh, I did some work in museums. And so some of that work involves changing the hanging hardware, taking wire off the backs and putting D-rings on. Um, and so I actually took a bunch of that wire that I took off of old paintings and I unwove it. And I used that as the wire that I threaded through. So all of those pieces, it's one whole piece. Um, so it's all been woven through so I could sculpt it to the form of the cracks. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe that the, the, that panel, had all, the whole Sistine Chapel has since been um, restored. So the, the cracks are not there anymore. Um, real quick, the concept I was looking into uh, investigating meditating on is the idea of original sin or original blessing um, and so this I this idea of um, you know revisiting that act of grabbing the fruit in that in the myth in Genesis um, and it's been said that in thinking about that that story that they chose from the wrong tree that, you know rather than the tree of life they chose from the tree of duality of the knowledge of good and evil um and so it's also kind of a meditation on the non-dual hence the the color form how you see it from one angle it's one thing you see it from the other angle um so a lot of it has to do with your vantage point the lens a lot of this the, the body of work small bites is very much about um what lens you're viewing the world around you through What's your vantage point? What's your perspective? And how over time does that shift? And how does it change um, based on what we're learning? When we're in school, we get confronted by a lot of new ideas, um, a, lot of new, a lot of people that have different backgrounds. And so there's this kind of evolution, this adaptation of, of your lenses. And my hope is to kind of point toward all of our lenses to see not only what we're seeing, but how we're seeing it and how we can see things better, differently, um, and kind of grow mm -hmm. together through that. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, I've already got this one in view, so maybe we'll hop on over here to this one next. Um, Merging Galaxies. It's another hand cut piece uh, using a jigsaw straight from plywood. You went over that with a water based aerosol can. Pattern trace from found cedar branch with bark beetle egg gallery. Yep. So here so it that, is. And it looks like yes, yeah, so you can see the source for this one in the other gallery. That's this right. <laughs> do you want to? Do you want me to say anything about the color, Ryan? Yeah, please. So, back to kind of like the, you know, my interest in astronomy, but also physics, and I. 
um, around the time I was making this work, I became very interested in, in deep space photography. And um, I don't know how familiar you are with these processes, but um, a lot of what we have imaged about deep space is called false color um, in that it's they use a lot of different um, imaging techniques of picking up different rays x-rays and all these things and they're actually colored um, in kind of like almost like a, a not real way so that they can become vivid enough to distinguish so this like ecstatic reality and so I became very yeah. drawn to this concept of of coloring very small things this way too. And so a lot of my choice in the colors of these pieces has to do with what's not seen. So within this coloration, you can see, for instance, if you zoom into kind of like the center of the larger portion, Ryan, um, and go up a little bit. So the space in between, you see how the, the color kind of shifts from the green into the blue into the red. And so, but you're not seeing the in between where they actually have that continuous, um, you know, gradient of the color. Uh, but you can, you can even what, even in what's missing, you can still see the result of it. So, you know, like they, they say that um, scientists say, well, most of what we understand about what's physically in the universe um, is called like dark matter, dark energy. And we don't really understand what it is. We just know its effects. And so kind of playing around with this idea, the things that are hidden, but we know they're there because of the effects they have on the world around us, on ourselves um, and on us as we grow and change and develop. Oh, that's great. I've um, got these little pieces in the corner as well, tied together with that same color scheme. And it looks like you um, you use an aerosol can to spray the whole thing and you go back and roll it. Yeah, uh, I thought it would work that way. Just a small bite. Yeah. yeah, I thought it would work that way, but I mostly had to go back in with a brush. And uh, oh, yeah. okay. so I love doing tedious things apparently. Um, yeah. That's it, and that piece is called us and that's on either side of the door frame um so you're surrounded by the community of us when you walk into the gallery so you you can see on the inside internally both forms the black and the white like they're the same and those are is scars. there anything you, you know, wanted those to are, say those are about wounds. yeah I was just going to say, if there's anything you wanted to say about the uh, the title of your show, the small bite. Yeah, yeah, this is a great this is a great place to to talk about that. Um, yeah, so the idea of small bites, um, I borrowed from a recent TV show called The Outsider on HBO, and and so it's based on a Stephen King novel, and so throughout the course of this show, the season of the show, the main character is, is really struggling with um, his paradigm kind of falling apart and shifting because of these th seeming like paradoxical events that are happening that he, he just can't put together. He can't make it work um, logically, reasonably based on his expectations. Um, and so one of the characters is like, you know, so this character's like, I'm losing my mind. I don't know what to do. And the, one of the characters is like, well, you got to take it in small bites, like a step at a time. And it just really struck me as kind of like a simple but vivid way to describe that process that we all go through. And that process is twofold because that process, as you can see, is, is you're zooming in on, on what those termites consumed. It's one tiny little bite at a time tiny little bite at a time and that's and you can see if you look at those source branches for those patterns and i can show you here too this is a this is one of the um this is a source for one of the big scrolls in the block gallery and if you if you look close at those source logs that are in the block gallery you can actually see the tiny little notches for each little bite um and i've I've found branches before that had active larvae in them and you can actually hear them go 
it reverberates through the whole branch. Um, and so not only do you see the results, you can actually hear the process uh, one bite at a time. And so that's how we develop. That's how the, that's how evolution works one bite at a time. Um, but also that's how um, problems happen. You know, one little thing at a time, you know, for instance, um, a lot of my work is using things I find from the environment. Um, I, you know, like the ideas around climate control, uh, you know, climate collapse and, um, you know, those issues are definitely something I'm reflecting on a lot. And um, it's little bites, it's little steps that kind of lead us farther and farther down this path that's harder and harder to come back from. But what it takes to get back is also these small steps, um, these small bites. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it can mean other things to you as well, but that's kind of what I was um, thinking about meditating on with the title. Well, it's great because it's, um, it's back to this micro versus macro issue that you're dealing with. You know, I'm looking at this, this note, this very sincere note with a deep filled space on it written by a person, you know, here we have this, you know, I don't know what the scale is, but three, four or five times the size of what this branch is. Um, and so what you're talking about, these small bites, I think plays right into that, that cool. idea. I have your screen on large. Would you like to give us a quick tour of your studio back home in St. Petersburg, Florida? Yeah, definitely. I can, I can give you, um, I'll show you kind of some of the, I have a lot of stuff in my, in my studio, as you'll see, because it's all my, my materials. I don't really, I often don't know what I'm going to make until I just encounter the materials. Um, so I just try to put everything in view. This, the vitrine that Ryan was just showing you, most of those contents used to be shoved into this curiosity cabinet. Um, but yeah, here's, here's some shelves, here's, so I just kind of make a gallery out of my studio just so I can, so the forms themselves can remain present. Um, and I even put plexiglass on <laughs> these shelves because out of sight, out of mind. So I want to. Hey, your um, studio looks like a gigantic curiosity cabinet. It looks yes. like you're living <laughs> inside. Of, you're one of those little larvae making the small bikes. There you go. <laughs> and I actually have a gallery in, uh, here as well. Right now it's full of lots of uh, building and art materials. So uh, that'll be for another day to show you that. Yeah. Well, that's excellent, Kenny. Uh, appreciate your time. Um, this is, I'm going to put my screen back large here. This is part one. So we have a part two over in Block Gallery that um, a lot of this work branched off from in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so this, this is sort of the second version of a much larger show. And uh, before we log off, uh, Kenny, we'll be back in October both to collect the work and to, um, to do a longer uh, artist talk with them in the space. So mm -hmm. we'll be looking for, for that link as well. And I can answer questions as, as well, if there's any questions from students or faculty. Um, yeah. I can answer specific questions too. Yes, the pandemic has shut all that down. So we'll be looking for ways to, to reconnect virtually. Yep. Exactly. Well, that's, uh, that's great, Kenny. Uh, appreciate your time, man. Uh, I'm going to stop recording and we'll go from there. Cool. Sounds good.